Many years ago, I bought a uh, video package where they had Joe Pass. I think it was one of the last projects he did. Uh, Joe Pass playing um, at the Guitar Institute or something like that out in California, and he was he was talking, he was answering questions, and he was playing with a, uh, a bassist and a drummer. And um, I just was watching this morning on YouTube. Uh, the clip is there. It's all the things you are by Joe Pass, and you'll see him playing on stage. And I was just picking out some of the things that he's doing. Um, it's sometimes interesting to look at how these great players would do things that you would never think of doing. Um, so, so one thing he does, this is like a little interlude intro before the bass player and the drummer come in. So he starts out with, you know, very quietly, and it's a nice dynamics thing. He just plays single notes. Sorry. And he does this little line. So again, Now he plays double stop here on strings two and three. Now, if you finger the D flat major seven, the next chord, he, he does a little finger picking thing, which I was a little surprised at. Second string, fifth string, second, third, second, twice. Change to a D minor seven. Play strings two and five together, then string three. Then he does this, which is contrary motion. Now that surprised me a lot too. So from the top, he's got the first two notes. Now we're gonna finger the D flat major seven. Finger the D minor seven. Now here's our contrary motion. What happens in the bass is this. What happens in the melody he's doing is so if you put it all together with the D minor seven, then he comes down this little triad shape here. section here is A flat major 7. I would never think of doing something like this. So he has, you know, here's the A flat major 7. If you just get rid of the second string, we don't need it. He does this. <laughs> so after playing the bass note on the fourth string, I mean the fourth uh, fret of the sixth string, he does this. So the descending string is string 4, and the uh, stationary note is the uh, C on the third string, fifth fret. Uh, I'll show you the booklet that I'm working from in a minute. It's a kind of a pain because every like four measures you have to turn the page. This is really nice. This is just, he, he threw in a back cycling thing through the cycle of fourths or the cycle of fifths. Okay. So, you know, the original tune is just F minor seven, B flat minor seven, E flat seven, A flat major seven, D flat major seven, then a two, five, and C. It's D minor, G seven to C. Then it's C minor, trying to catch up to him, and then F minor, B flat seven, E flat major seven, A flat major seven, and then a two five in G, which is A minor seven, D seven, G. Then it's, okay, here he throws in an E seven flat nine. Yeah, and then A minor seven, So really, you know, in the original tune, it just goes to G major 7. But along the way, here's what he does. We have 
he plays this over um, A minor 7. Now, all this that I'm going to play the next, like, 15 notes is just something he threw in before we land on the G, G major 7. So, you know, that little phrase is over D7. Now check it out. C major 7. B flat major 7. E flat major 7. A flat major 7. And finally he lands on the, uh, the G major 7. So it's this kind of stuff. Um, what he threw in here was C major 7 to F major 7, B flat major 7 to E flat major 7, A flat major 7 to G major 7. Here he's using a diminished. Then he lands on the E major 7. Plays a B, then plays the open E. Goes down chromatically to this G flat 13, which I know I don't play when it's time to go back for another A section. Because here's this A section coming up. a good screw up because it one it brought me back to talk about something I wanted to talk about. Another thing he does right here that I just became aware of, he plays E flat seven, then E flat seven with D flat in the bass, then A flat major seven with C in the bass, back to D flat major seven. So he's throwing in moving bass lines that aren't in the original tune, which is really cool. So Let's take it one more time from the top. Um, as I said, the video of Joe playing is online. Um, just put, uh, you know, Joe Pass, um, all the things you are. You know, you might come across some just recordings with no video, but this, this one has video of him playing. I uh, forget the bass player's name, but um, again, it's when Joe was older. It was, it was I think, maybe in 93 or 94. I, I don't remember when he passed away. But anyway, from the top, he just does the single notes starting out super quiet. There's no bass, there's no drums. And then this little, he threw in that counter melody. Now we're on the D flat major seven. Again, he's doing the finger picking thing. D minor seven. There's another one where he did a walking bass line. So the chords are, that's just a regular melody. What he did was, uh, starting from the C minor 7 again, to the F minor 7, to the B flat 7. Now he's got, he's throwing in that A flat as part of the B flat seven. So he's throwing in the seventh, you know? And this is one that, you know, there's some, some chords you use all the time and some chords you never use. This is one I almost never use. So you have B flat seven here. You know, the bar would be this, but the easier way is here. We got the B flat on the bottom. Here you have the barring these three. So that's, that's um, a B flat seven with the A flat, the seventh in the bass. There's so much you can pick up if you look at this, uh, you know, arrangement of his long enough. You find so many little gems.
thinks of doing this. That's why it was Joe Pass. I don't know what that is. That's over a G major seven, but he's doing. I think it's a. It's kind of like um, a sharp five. Anyway, slightly dissonant there. Now he does this cool thing, which is when it goes to. That's the regular melody. Here's what he does. Um, let's try it again. So he's sliding from the D melody note up to the um, G, and at the same time he's sliding up to that note. He's playing the open E. So plays the D on the first string. that really cool thing he threw in. C major 7, B flat, A flat, which leads in chromatically down to the, you know, to play it the normal way would be this. So again, that little thing which is worth learning, I'm fingering it weirdly to do what he did, but you know, it's basically this. Okay, but we're not using the second string on the C major 7. So anyway, here's how I fingered it. That's actually an F major 7 there. B flat. E flat. A flat. And then landing on the G. major 7 and it's worth looking at again chromatically now down to a G flat 13 um, then he's you know back to the A section and here, who does, who's going to do finger picking here? But he did. Okay. Um, try that one more time from the A section. is cool. 11 on the first string, 9 on the third string, 9 on the fifth string. This you could use just anytime you play all the things you are. It's, it's nice. It's kind of wacky, but it's really good. Jump down for the F sharp on the sixth string, and then come back. B diminished. And then this. So, if you get a chance, check out the video. Um, let me show you what I'm working from here. Again, it's an annoying little booklet. Uh, but it's a transcription of what he played as an introduction for all the things you are. A little solitary interlude before the bass and drums. Like I said, it's annoying because it's a new page every few measures. Um, I didn't go all the way through. I just played the first little chunk. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Let me know if you have any other favorite Joe Pass arrangements or solos or what have you. You know, I, I think there's very few people that would 
argue with the fact that he might have been the greatest solo guitar player, solo jazz guitar player ever. I mean, you could argue Wes Montgomery, Johnny Smith, but when he got going, uh, you know, his time, his creativity. I mean, if you ever check out any videos and recordings of him with Ella Fitzgerald, it's just him and Ella, and then he's like a band behind her when she's singing. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't, and throw me a like if you found it useful, and have a great day. See you soon.